showing much flex when it's time to titrate, tip and flex and dropping the bass like a noble laureate, yeah. And it don't quit. I think they're in the mood for some <laughs> That's right, today we're talking about titration. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break hey. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kemenacha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. Fu better know that. So Fu, in the last episode, we talked about strong and weak acids and bases. Yeah, and in this one, we're gonna talk about how acids and bases react. What in titration? Acid what you did there. So let's get started. Titration, a lesson from the acids and bases unit. Neutralization. A neutralization reaction is a double replacement reaction in which an acid reacts with a base to form neutral products. It follows the general format, acid plus base yields salt plus water. As with any double replacement reaction, look up charges, switch partners to predict products, use table F for phases and balance. Shu, are you pumped about neutralization? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Acid plus base yields salt plus water. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an example here for you. Shu, are you ready? I am. All right, write a balanced chemical equation with phases for the neutralization of sulfuric acid with aqueous potassium hydroxide. Now, a lot of this is gonna sound like review. So what I want you to do is up above, we're gonna keep track of which reference tables we use. We're not actually gonna to go to them on screen, um, but we're gonna keep track so that you at home uh, can actually see which tables we're using. There's quite a few of them here. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is look up the formulas for both our acid and our base. So that already is two tables. So where are we going? All right, so I've got sulfuric acid. I'm gonna find that on table. K, and sulfuric acid has the formula H2SO4. They also give me the phase right on table K, so H2SO4 aqueous. Okay, what about potassium hydroxide? All right, potassium hydroxide, that should be a base. So that is found on table L, although it's just a regular ionic formula, so I could just do it by looking up charges if I had to. But I do get off of table L, KOH, again, they give me the phase. It is aqueous. Okay, so again, this is a neutralization reaction. This is just like what type of reaction we already talked about? Um, double replacement, because we've got two compounds reacting. Good, good. So we are going to first, before we do that, look up our charges. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use my periodic table. I guess I should know that. Right? Good. Periodic table um, to look up H. H is plus one. Okay. Um, SO4 is a polyatomic. Good, that's another table. Oh, wow, so that's table E. That whole thing I like to put in parentheses is minus two. Okay. Um, K off the periodic table is plus one, and then OH off of table E is minus one. Okay, I think we're ready to do a little square dancing here, All so right. let's uh, swap partners. All right, so H plus is gonna go with OH minus, positive with negative. K plus is gonna go with SO4 minus two. Okay, All so right. let's put those together. All right, so I'm gonna start out with um, just some work to show how I'm writing the formulas. I wanna ignore that two on the H plus, right? Yeah, remember we only bring over subscripts if they're part of a polyatomic ion. Right, and that's not, so, uh, and then OH minus. So I get those together and I get HOH. Good. And then I also have K plus one, and I do leave the four on SO4 minus two, right? It's polyatomic ion. Very good. And I get K2 SO4. All right, so we've got our products, right? What's the next step here? Uh, I think I wanna balance it. Don't okay. wanna forget that. I'm balancing, let's see, I've got two H's over on the left. I'm only looking at the first H here on the right, so I wanna two here. I've got two OHs. I want to put a two back over there. And I now have two Ks. And I have two Ks over on the right. And I have one SO4 on both sides as 
well. So it looks like we're balanced here. All right, one final thing to get this all correct. We are looking for the phases here, so we have to use yet another reference table. Okay, so table F, right? Yep. Of solubility guidelines. So um, HOH, that's the same thing as water though, right? So I'm not gonna use table F for water. Water is just it, a liquid. It's a substance, right? So we did have some uh, rules that we already went over for those. Yeah, you're right. Water is a liquid. Okay. And then K2SO4, if I look on table F, um, K plus one is a group one ion. Those are always soluble. So this one should be aqueous. Good. You try number one. Write a balanced chemical equation with phases for the neutralization of hydrochloric acid with aqueous calcium hydroxide. Make sure to use all the reference tables that we used in the previous example. Let's talk about the lab procedure, titration. Let's begin with the purpose, to determine the concentration in molarity of an unknown acid or base by reacting it with a base or acid of known molarity. Let's talk about the materials used for titration. A base of known concentration, so a standard solution, a burette to deliver this base, an acid of unknown concentration, an Erlenmeyer flask to hold this acid, a stir plate with a stir bar, a few drops of indicator in the acid. Procedure. Base is added from the burette to the acid in the flask as the stir bar spins. When the base has completely neutralized the acid, the equivalence point has been reached. However, we don't know to stop titrating until the indicator changes color, called the end point. Depending on the indicator, this may occur before or after the equivalence point, but won't affect our measurement significantly. Let's take a look at the data. Molarity of the base is always MB. This is given since it's a standard solution. Volume of the base added is always VB, and this is VF minus VI from your burette. If you take a look at the images below, the burette is always gonna have an initial reading and a final reading. So you just have to subtract those two to get the total volume used. Volume of the acid is VA. This is measured into the flask before. Molarity of the acid, MA. This is what we don't know. This is what we're trying to find. Continuing on with calculations, at the equivalence point, the moles of acid equal the moles of base since neutralization occurred. This is also written as the titration formula found on table T. So this titration formula is MA times VA equals MB times VB. I kind of just like to say MAVA equals MUGVA. It's a little faster. MA is the molarity of H+, VA is the volume of acid, MB is the molarity of OH-, and VB is the volume of base. Let's do an example showing you how to use the titration formula. You ready, Fu? I'm ready. All right. If 25.0 milliliters of 2.00 molar NaOH is used to titrate 30.0 milliliters of HCl to its endpoint, what is the molarity of the HCl? All right, let's start with our formula. All right, that would be MAVA equals MUVVU. Correct. M-A-V-A -A equals M B. BB. All right, looking back at the problem, what are we trying to solve for? It says, what is the molarity of the HCl? HCl is an acid, so I'm solving for the molarity of acid. Looks like MA. Very good. We're ready to substitute now. What would VA be? Uh, that's the volume of the acid, and it says here in the middle, 30 milliliters of HCl, HCl again being the acid, so it should be 30.0 milliliters. Good. Continuing on, let's find MB. Okay, MB is the base, NaOH. Uh, molarity would be 2.00 mole. Good. And finally, let's substitute in VB. Uh, and that is right next to it of 25.0 milliliters. All right, looks like we are ready to solve. We need an answer with sig figs and proper units. All right, so plugging this all in, it looks like everything has three sig figs, so three sig figs are my final answer of 1.67, and since this is molarity, it's saying what is the molarity, um, big capital M for molar. Excellent.
Be aware that acids can contain more than one hydrogen ion that needs to be neutralized. Acids with more than one ionizable hydrogen are called polyprotic acids. Now let's break down this word polyprotic. Poly, which I'm sure you've heard before, is a prefix that means many. Protic. Protic, in this case, comes from the word proton. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we think about the H's that we've been talking about this entire unit, H pluses, if you have a hydrogen atom, it's only one proton and one electron. If you lose that one electron to get your positive charge, you only have a proton. So for shorthand, we kind of just call them protons. So hydronium and H pluses can also be called protons. Polyprotic means you could have more than one of those. So you could have two, that would be diprotic, or three, that would be triprotic. This also means that since Ma equals the molarity of H+, the molarity given for an acid might change. So for example, a one molar H3PO4 solution would actually have one molar times the three H pluses. This would make it three molar. Now this is kind of like the Van Hoff factor, but it's not exactly like it. So since H3PO4 has three protons, you'd simply multiply that molarity times three. Bases can also contain more than one hydroxide ion. For example, if we have two molar CaOH2, we have two OHs, so we would multiply the two molar times two. We would get a molarity of OH minus of four molar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an example involving a polyprotic acid. Shu, are you ready? I am. All right, if 15.0 milliliters of two molar H2SO4 is used to titrate 20 milliliters of NaOH, what is the molarity of the NaOH? All right, like all calculations, we're gonna do this FSA. So Shu, what is our formula? Formula is MAVA equals MBBB. Okay, let's circle in the question and the formula what it is asking for. All right, it says, what is the molarity of the NaOH? Okay, so NaOH is what type of substance? Oh, that's the base in this problem. Okay. So that would be MB in the formula. Very good. So we're ready to substitute in some numbers. So okay. let's find out what MA is first. All right, well, it looks like the acid is H2SO4 right here. Good. And it says that it is two molar H2SO4. All right. We're gonna be a little careful here though, because what do we notice about the uh, acid in this case? Uh, the H2SO4 actually has two H's in it. Good, so this is a polyprotic acid. This is a diprotic acid, because it has two. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we're gonna do to the molarity of 2.00 molar. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to double it because Ma is the molarity of H plus, so we have to double the H plus. So I'm gonna show that two times 2.00 molar. Good, it's always a good idea to remember that it's the molarity of H pluses. It says that on your reference tables too, if you ever forget. All right, let's look up Va. Well, the 15.0 milliliters also goes with the H2SO4. So I'm gonna put that in for Va. NB is what I'm trying to find. And then the volume of the base, the 20 milliliters of NaOH, goes in for VB. Okay, I think we're ready to get our answer in proper sig figs in unit. All right, so we're gonna multiply and divide. We're solving for NB. Um, let's see, sig fig wise, again, pretty easy. Looks like everything's three sig figs. So for NB, I get 3.00. It's a concentration in molarity. So big M molar for my final answer. Very good. You try number two. If 34.5 milliliters of 1.0 molar CaOH2 is used to neutralize 50.0 milliliters of HNO3, what is the molarity of the nitric acid? Please be careful when determining the molarity of your OH minus ions. And make sure you show your work FSA with proper units and sig figs. Conclusions. Acids and bases react together in a neutralization reaction. A known acid or base can be used to determine the concentration of an unknown base or acid in a titration lab. The titration formula allows us to calculate the unknown molarity from our lab data. 
Titration is fun! Yay! Acid plus base yield salt plus water. Acid plus base yield salt plus water. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on titration. My mental state varied widely. Promotional consideration provided by... Visa Geniza! Use your head and stay organized. Carry up to seven pounds. It's weatherproof material. Four handy storage areas. Adjustable clips make mounting a snap. But we never off, always we zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. Uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. Uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.